What is up everybody, Kyle here, back again, not quite on the action adventure hunting right now, as right now I'm standing in front of the movie theater, getting ready to go inside to see the 35 year dream finally come true, two nights only, June 23rd, June 25th, G.I. Joe the movie from 1987, the animated movie, uh, probably my favorite movie of all time, I have dreamed since I was a little kid when they first announced it and said it was going to be in theaters and it didn't happen, been dreaming of this moment since I was seven years old. So I am so stoked for this, so excited for this. I got the wife and kids here. Of course, I was late to picking them up. This is my busiest time of year at work. Uh, it's quite the grind. People, I don't know how I do it. You guys would be shocked the amount of hours I put in, but so is life, I guess. But this is a nice bright spot here. The anticipation's killing me. I've seen this movie a thousand times. Now it'll be a thousand and one, but so, so excited to see it on the big screen. That opening credit's gonna give me chills, I can feel it. Hopefully the kids enjoy it, hopefully my wife. They've never seen this, so they're gonna be just over the moon. I'm sure they're gonna love it. But they said they would come along because this is kind of my birthday, I guess. It's my, that's all I wanted for my birthday was CGI Joe of the theater. Getting my wish. I can't wait. You guys are aboard for the fun. The spirit of the will run for Falling into box lunch. Apparently hot squishmallow hook up here. We'll see what Elle can find. Will I find anything? No. It's the Squishmallow Kids. It's the Squishmallow Kids exclusives. Maybe they put that though, it's gonna have a hole in it. Don't break your phone if you sat me. Emma's so violent. Oh, jeez. Oh, killing me. I feel like you're Bam Margera and I'm his dad. Ow, jeez. Oh. That girl just assaulted me. Let everybody know. It's all on camera. You're going to jail. Hey, kid, this isn't a library. Oh, look at that, Barnes & Noble. I haven't seen this in a long time. Oof. Number one cheesesteak in the world. Charlie's, I don't know about that, but that's what I'm eating for dinner. Before the G.I. Joe movie, wife and kids are going to Chick-fil-A. They're not messing around. They're always getting Chick-fil-A. I'm being different. I'm going with the old chicken teriyaki. Ah, the mall food court, Sabaro. Some of the finest pizza you'll ever have. There's Emma. Emma, tell us about your haircut. Uh-oh. She's not talking. Um, I got bangs. She got bangs. Yes. Oh! She likes to hit me now. Elle, what are your expectations for the Joe movie? I think it's gonna be okay. Now, what is your guess? How many people will be in the theater? Um, uh, I'm gonna say 32. 32. Emma, how many people are going to be in the theater? 41. 41, 32, I'm going to say 20. Dude, and, that's a horrible guess. Well, we'll see who's closest. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be sold out. I doubt it. I might only be surprised. It might just be us there. What if, it, if I win? What if there's 41 people there? Then you win. You win the prize. We'll figure what that is. It's your favorite G.I. Joe classified figure, Croc Master and Fiona. Um, excuse me, I don't like G.I. Joe. Well, you're coming to the wrong place if you don't like it. We're going to the movie. We'll have to see what mom's guess is. So you're saying 41, you said 36? 32. 32. I'm going to say 20. So we'll see how many people are actually there at the movie tonight. My lucky number is 41. Yeah, because you're 41 years old. No, you're 41 years old, right? Now. Oh, yeah, you're right. And did you know, Emma, when this movie came out, I was seven years old. How old are you? Seven. Yep. And I feel like when I was seven, I was smarter than you. No? Yeah, I'm sure. Let me give you a burn. A burn? Okay. So, I'm way smarter than you because I've been doing school, and you've been just watching wrestling all day. Uh, you got a point. You got a point. She's been doing school for a lot of years. How many years you been doing school? Okay, let me see. 
You've had three years of schooling. You are a legend. Three years. Isn't that what they say? Three only, years of schooling, and then they put you on the day shift? For one day. Yep. You've only been there for one day, and you said, I quit because I need to walk my horse in your bathroom. You got a lot of sass. Jeez. And you're very violent. We're going to have to talk to you about your violent rages. I heard you've been beating up your sister. There's been a lot of crazy stuff with old Emma. Yeah. She doesn't go to sleep. That's part of the problem. You sneak your iPad and stay up all night and don't go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about this off screen. Elle, enjoy your ice cream cone. Let's watch some Joes. Look what I got. Mom got me Cold Stone. Mom, so nice of you. Mm -hmm. Mom, we're, what's your guess on how many people are going to be at the movie? I originally thought high 40s, but now I'm thinking no. There's like nobody here. I'm going to go up 39. I hope that doesn't. This kid's so rude. Stealing my ice cream. All Excuse right. Excuse me, you better be saying that to yourself. 7 o'clock, G.I. Joe. There it is. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh getting closer. 7 o'clock, yo, Joe. I tell you what, I'm really disappointed there's no G.I. Joe poster here. I can get my picture by to remember this event. What are we doing? Come on, movie theater. Should have G.I. Joe poster hanging somewhere. But nothing, nothing. Just trainings and much more. Fathom can deliver your message. Broadcasted live. Emma's ready. Super 7 getting a plug. Look at my boy Flint. Look at how regal up top there. What a legend. Oh, Flint. Oh, see it on the big screen. Own it now. If you don't have this, what are you doing with your life? You don't have this on Blu-ray. Oh, man. What is all that chatter? What, why are they piping chatter in? Oh, sideshow. Go Joe. Those don't look so much sideshow as they do Super 7. It's supposed to come in July. I don't, I'm not going to hold my breath for July. I'll hold it for August, though. What's next? Oh, what is this? Cobra is at it again. Not again. Selling arms and wreaking havoc on the innocent. Oh, no. It is up to G.I. Joe to oh, meet Cobra. this threat. Oh, dude. Where's the leader, Flint? In their tracks. In G.I. Joe. Uh, no Flint. Break, no Kyle. Take on the roles of the G.I. Joe team to save the world oh, from the look at this. Cobra. In this core game box, you will face Cobra Commander and his legions of Cobra Troopers and Crimson Guard. As well as powerful lieutenants like Major Blood, Copperhead, hmm. Doctor Mindbender, and Baroness, you will raise your favorite mm, game. This is it for me. You will deploy the Joes to locations on the board and move to control. I bet it's real complicated. Battle the forces of evil using your special talents and abilities. And at times, I do like to battle evil, though. Recover your resources to prepare to continue the fight. Hmm. Well, oh, this is complicated. Yeah, you're right. Nobody would play this with me is the problem. It's like that Motorhead trivia box set I got. Nobody would play it with me. The world needs your help to keep Cobra at bay. I'm helpless. Movie audiences, and thank oh, you so much for joining us today Lenny. for showing of the 1987 classic animated G.I. Joe movie. Wow, that Emily could have been me up there. I work on the G.I. Joe toy team at Hasbro doing marketing, and I am joined by... Hi, I'm Lenny on the G.I. Joe design team. And we are so excited to be here today with you, G.I. Joe fans. And you know, since you're here watching this movie from 1987, we're just kind of, kind of assume that you were a G.I. Joe fan in 1987. Yeah. And that when you think of G.I. Joe toys, you think of... These guys, they were amazing. They were three and three quarter inches. They had O-rings. They were <laughs> awesome toys. They still are awesome toys, but but now we, we have evolved. <laughs> and so now we are so excited to be talking to you about G.I. Joe classified series. So these are the figures that you can see here. So these are the new modern interpretation of G.I. Joe. They are six inch figures with premium deco. They are highly articulated. These are the toys that you imagined these figures were when you were kids. That's these, right. They're amazing. And it's part of our design philosophy for G.I. Joe Classified. So we looked at the old designs of the O-ring figures as we so affectionately call them. Mm -hmm. And we kind of updated them to say, what would these characters look like in 2020 at the time when we were developing it? And now 2022 as the line has been expanding. Because we actually have a deep collection of figures at this point. We're going to be we do. edging by, towards what number? By the end of 2023, we will have 100 figures in 
wow. collection, wow. which I is fabulous. <laughs> yeah, um, over 100 figures actually by the end yeah. of 2023. But we are we're so excited to get to kind of show you guys what these new figures look like. And one of the things, like Lenny mentioned, as we are updating characters. We know that really the root of G.I. Joe is in its storytelling That's right. and its characters. And so we want to really make sure that we are telling amazing stories with these figures, with the accessories that they're in. And one of the things that we used to do that are something that we call diorama pictures. Mm -hmm. And so we take these toys, well, not, not us, we have professional photographers yes, take very these talented toys, people. very talented, on these amazing sets and basically act out different stories to create toy photography. So we're going to show you a couple of the pictures that some of our photographers have taken to highlight how amazing these classified series figures are. And it's kind of the beauty of the articulation of these figures where you can pose them out and make these really cool, elaborate, realistic looking scenes with them. Like when we were kids playing with G.I. Joes, like we wanted to play out these like crazy adventures, these crazy stories, and now you can even more so. So very exciting. Which is, and we love that every time we create a new character, we get to take these to our photographers and have them kind of bring them to life with these story moments, yeah, very which cool. is amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out with us to learn a little bit more about kind of our modern version of G.I. Joe. You knew about classified series before. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank we you really guys. appreciate it. Uh, if you're just learning about classified series now, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us. Please make sure that you enjoy your movie, silence your cell phones, make sure you get your popcorn before the movie starts, and should we do a Yo Jo? Absolutely. Three? All right, one, two, three, Yo, Yo Jo! Yo Joes, welcome to your first mission briefing. The enemy that we're up against call themselves Cobra La. They've got to be the meanest, toughest, and most lethal force on Earth. This enemy appears to have acquired a weapons technology that's unlike anything we've ever seen. Everything in their arsenal is organic. Their vehicles, their weapons, even their projectiles are all living things. But don't take my word for it. Roadblock, let's hear some intel from the Joes been inside their lair. Hello, Joes. Not only are these Cobra Lines mean, but they're the craziest enemy I've ever seen. Let's start with Pythona. She's a one-woman commando squad. Pythona is highly skilled in forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat we've never seen before. And she's a master of stealth techniques. This plus the fact that she's highly intelligent makes her a formidable opponent. And that's before we even get to the fact that she's got claws that secrete an acid that can melt pure steel. If you survive an encounter with her, you still have to get through him. Nemesis oh, Enforcer. Boy. Terror from below and above. His strength is off What's the charts. What's a Nemesis and Enforcer? His pure brawling ability is matched only by his excessive aggression. But even he isn't the most dangerous enemy of the group. Right, Scarlet? Affirmative, Duke. That would be Globulus, their leader. Half man, half something else. He's the mastermind behind their plot to destroy humanity and take over the world. And he's got the strength and the intellect to pull it off. You must neutralize him at all costs, for the entire operation is a bust. Duke, I know it wasn't your intention, but there's someone else you forgot to mention. That's right. We're not just up against Cobra La, but Cobra as well. And their usual operatives, including Destro, the Crimson Guard, the Dreadnox, and let's not forget the deadliest of them all, the Pentor. Did you really just say the deadliest of them all? Really? Serpentor? That pompous, arrogant dolt? He's nothing without me. We've got a comms breach. Scarlet, get mainframe and dial to an army. Stand. My telephones infiltrated your network to gather intel on your plan. And instead, I have to listen to you praising that overrated brat Serpentor? You underestimate the power of Cobra, ruled by its one true commander. Duke, Dial Tone says he's located the breach, and Mainframe will have it patched in five, four, three. Joining forces with the Jones will only bring you two things. Defeat and disgrace. I invite you to enlist with the world's one true superpower, Cobra! Duke, we're clear. Okay, Joes, you've now seen firsthand what we're up against. Anyone who doesn't have the guts to continue can back out now. Do I have any takers? No? Good. I knew you had it in you to be one of us. To join the fight wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. Yo, Joe! This is for Temple Alpha and Bazooka! This is for Falcon! This is for me! This is for Duke! And 
this is for the U.S. Army! You make me sick. What did you rank the movie out of five? Well, she fell asleep. Three out of five. She fell asleep. <laughs> what did you rank it? Uh, out of what? Five out of... Out of five? Um, probably like a three. Eloise? Yeah. You guys all are horrible <laughs> movie reviewers. <laughs> five out of five. All right. I am back home as I just got out of the theater for the G.I. Joe animated movie. After 35 years of waiting... Man, it was quite the time. I thought I'd sum it up a little bit, give a couple of notes that I have for it, and just uh, kind of free flow talk about my experience seeing this movie in the theater after 35 years. I keep mentioning that. I just can't believe it's been 35 years. And of course, you take it way back to 1987. I was a very young Kyle, but I knew enough of what was going on at the time. I was collecting the Joes. That was my number one focus in life was my G.I. Joe collection. I played with them every single day after school, uh, weekends, you name it. I had Joes around me at all times. This was my prime Joe years. Uh, I got into wrestling, of course, and a lot of other things later. I was into Star Wars, Masters of the Universe. I was in all the usual 80s. Uh, things, but Joe's by far was my number one. So obviously a kid that loved the animated series, and I can't remember, I feel like it was like a G.I. Joe magazine type thing that you got at the bookstore or your local grocery store or something. There was like a G.I. Joe Adventures magazine. That's what I want to think is where I first heard there was going to be a G.I. Joe animated movie. Obviously, the Transformers movie we knew about, that one came before the G.I. Joe one. Uh, so once I got wind and we started talking on the old playground, as we always talk about, uh, there was a Joe movie coming out. Man, you know I was excited. I'm sure I was bugging my dad. I'm sure I was just could not wait for a G.I. Joe animated movie. It was my favorite thing in the world. Well, before we knew it, where is that movie? Is it ever coming? I haven't seen the movie. Where's the movie? Uh, and there was no talk of it. And there was no internet. And seven-year-olds probably, well, I, Emma, my daughter's seven. She can get all over the internet if she wants to. She knows what to do. She knows enough to be dangerous. She's probably hacking into some government official or something right now. Who knows? Yeah, she better not be. Uh, but at seven, I didn't know where it was. Where's the movie? When's it going to come out? And I still remember. It's one of my most cherished childhood memories. My local grocery store, and you guys probably all went to a local grocery store as a kid. And back then, of course, grocery stores also rented out movies, VHS tapes to be uh, a little bit more into it. But VHS tapes. And I'll forget going down the aisle and seeing on the counter this. This exact copy, I still have this back from probably 88 is probably this came out. This is 1987, so it did actually come in 87. Uh, the VHS tape, well, I guess that makes sense, but the VHS tape came out in 1987. I remember this sitting on the kind of desk or whatever you want to call it, the table at my local grocery store in the VHS section, and I remember just being in absolute awe. I could not believe what I was seeing here. This was the G.I. Joe movie. What about the theater? What happened to the theater? But of course, I immediately, Dad, Dad, I need this. I need this. And we picked it up that day. We did buy this. And uh, my life was forever changed. And I still own my original copy from way back then. Uh, how crazy is that after all these years? Uh, this tape has been played so many times. Running time, 93 minutes. I bet you I've seen the G.I. Joe movie at least 100 times. I mean, I'm not even exaggerating. It is probably my favorite movie of all time. Uh, and you guys know I'm not a huge movie buff. Uh, I don't watch a lot of movies. It's just not my thing. I usually don't devote that much time to something. I have so many other things I have to do, and I've always been that way. Uh, but this is one I can sit and watch anytime. And it seems crazy because a lot of people have probably better movies, uh, to be honest with you. But for me... Pure nostalgia. I was so excited when the DVD came out back in the day and then the Blu-ray edition of the DVD. Uh, of course, I've had about every single copy there is known to man on these. Uh, and so I was very excited as a kid picking this bad boy up. It was such a great memory for me. Watching it immediately, just anticipating. I couldn't believe when it folded before my eyes. I wish I had that same experience tonight. Obviously, like I said, I've seen it like a hundred times. So I knew every word, every bit of the movie. But it was still something special to see it on the big screen. So I thought I'd start with a few positives. Uh, only two really negatives. And they're very minor here, but we'll talk about those. But always start with the positives. That's always a hot business tip for you. Always start positive. Work negative in later. Uh, that's pro tip for the day here. Uh, but it was a very interesting open. Of course, these uh, phantom events or fathom events or whatever, uh, they're not like a traditional movie with a bunch of trailers and everything before, but there always is a few little things. Like the Transformers movie, we got some stop animation of the action figures and stuff, which was really cool. 
This one, we got an opening of like a little bit of a bio where they talked about Nemesis Enforcer, Galobulus, Pythona, like nobody knew who they were or something. It was very strange uh, opening, but the cool thing was it wasn't necessarily new animation, but you could tell it was new voiceovers by Scarlet, Roadblock, and Duke. Uh, Duke sounded pretty old, uh, but it sounded really good. I would be all for an older Duke in a new animated series, but uh, it was very interesting to see them talk and kind of their updated voices, I guess, with some of the old school animation. So I really did like that portion, portion of it. Then they transitioned to our old friends Emily and Lenny at Hasbro, and they had a little setup of some G.I. Joe classified figures. They talked about the classified line, how it's reimagining the old Joes that we loved, and how it's doing so well uh, out in market, things like that. Uh, so we talked about that little stuff. But then they did drop a couple of things that by the end of 2023, we will be over 100 figures in the G.I. Joe line. 2023, they are ramping that Joe line. We know we're going from like three figures in a series to six. They're ramping things up. G.I. Joe Mania sweeping the nation. Uh, it's going to bust our wallets for sure in 2023, so stay tuned for that. But it was really cool because not everybody that likes G.I. Joe went to this movie would know there is action figures. So it was a really good plug there. Obviously, Hasbro owns G.I. Joe. It all synergizes together, so that worked for me. It was really cool to see there. I will say there was 26 people in the theater. Theater probably holds 100 people. Easy. Uh, it was a nice theater with recliners and all that kind of fun stuff. So I don't know if that's disappointing or not. Um, I don't know how many hardcore G.I. Joe fans there are. It is a Thursday night here. I did see it on the 23rd of June. It is playing on the 25th of June. My birthday, as you guys know. Uh, that was probably going to be a little bit more attended because it is a Saturday. Uh, but I did think it was uh, respectable. I was very disappointed. Uh, a couple of negative things here. I was very disappointed in the movie as far as uh, when I saw Transformers in the movie the last couple of times. When it re-released for some anniversaries. There was a nice poster, a nice standee in the lobby. There was none of that for G.I. Joe. I would have loved a picture with my kids against the G.I. Joe poster. Uh, my kids did come along. My wife came along for the movie. Would have been nice to get a group family photo there for all the memories, the 35 years and counting memories there. Didn't get that, so that was a little bit of a bummer, I thought. Uh, as far as the this quality and the sound of the movie, the sound was a hair, the sound was a hair light. I think it could have been turned up just a little bit. And then the animation, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I was expecting, and no, nowhere did they ever say this, but I was expecting a little bit to see uh, the uh, animation kind of redone a little bit, kind of cleaned up, because this is 87 animation. You could clean it up with modern technology. Unfortunately, it wasn't any of that, and it didn't seem to be quality-wise as good as even the Blu-ray, and maybe that's just me. Uh, I am by no means an expert on that kind of stuff, but it was a little bit grainier than I anticipated it to be, but at the end of the day, it was still amazing to sit in that theater. You guys have seen the Joe movie by now, and if not, you better run out and see that thing this weekend, uh, but the Joe movie was so good. The opening of that movie is the best opening of any movie ever. To, the, to this day, it gives me goosebumps. I'm sitting there. I might have even teared up a little bit. My my wife might have made fun of me, but it was just such a magical moment seeing that on the big screen after all these years. I've seen that opening more times than I've seen the movie. I used to rewind this tape just back to the opening all the time, and that's how I wanted my G.I. Joe battles as a kid to be. Everything that opening that movie is what I was trying to use my toys and my imagination for as a kid. So just to see that again, but seeing it on the big screen was something very, very special. Absolutely loved that one. And then the movie's the movie. Uh, go see it. We've all seen it. I'm not going to break it all down, but of course you had all of our old friends. We had Sergeant Slaughter in there. I don't know how he could tell me with a straight face what's a nemesis enforcer. He battled for his life against that guy. But uh, I'll never forget that. So that's always kind of comical whenever uh, Nemesis Enforcer, Enforcer and Sergeant Slaughter square off, you know, watching it. Of course, Flint should have had a lot more screen time, I think. I think that was one of the major issues there. I think if Flint would have been a part of the first party to take on Cobra Law, I think the movie would have been over about a half hour. It would have just been like a normal episode. But they were probably smart. They said, we need to get more out of this story. Let's leave Flint behind. Let's have him on the rescue mission for Roadblock. Uh, it makes all the sense in the world. You gotta, you gotta delegate that time out. You need it to a full length movie because they know if Flint went there, business would be over right away. He would have walked right up to Globulus, probably blown his head off. Who knows? Who knows? But Lieutenant Falcon, kind of the star of the show, uh, in the hot rod seat, as we all know. Uh, you love it, you hate it. I liked it. I liked Hot Rod as a kid. I liked Falcon as a kid. I don't like Falcon as much as I I do or I did when I was a kid as I'm older. Uh, I don't know. He's a little bit uh, out there sometimes. Of course, Duke, you know, he was supposed to die. And then uh, the Transformers movie, the Optimus Prime death kind of changed a lot of things. 
It would be really interesting if somebody did a cut where Duke did die. Uh, because, you know, it felt like he was dead right there. And it would have been interesting for the G.I. Joe universe if he actually did die. Because I'm sure Flint would have slid in. They all respected Flint, of course, as being the leader of the Joes. Uh, you know, General Hawk's up there in his ivory tower. But the real leader of G.I. Joe has always been Flint. And everybody respected that and knew that, of course. Uh, but with Duke out of the picture, I'm sure it would have been much more official. Even though it was official, but it would have been official official. I'm sure you guys know where that goes. Uh, but very, very cool. I really did like the movie. It still holds up to me. Uh, the opening, of course, like I said, is just uh, some of the greatest uh, cinematic masterpieces of all time, I think I'd have to say. But there it is. It was quite the show. I'm so glad I did it. That's the 35th anniversary. I hope they do with like they do with Transformers, like every five years put it in the theater. I think there is some more buzz for the Joe brand right now. I think we need a new animated series of some kind, and hopefully it would be great if they took that new IDW comic book uh, of the kind of rehashing the old cartoon, if they could make the cartoon with some modern stuff, but give us the feel of the old stuff, I think we'd be uh, cooking with gas is what would happen if that happened, and you guys know I would be all in. Uh, but the future is bright. We better put our shades on because we know we got at least 100 classified figures coming over the last few years uh, by the end of next year. There's a lot of G.I. Joe stuff. I'm sure there'll be maybe another movie. I don't know about the Snake Eyes movie, but hopefully Hopefully they figure something out and give us something else. Uh, but the G.I. Joe brand is pretty bright right now. So as G.I. Joe fans, we got to be happy. we got to try to champion this stuff as much as we can because I don't know about you guys, but to me, I want some G.I. Joe is better than no G.I. Joe. And that's what I got here tonight. And it was uh, pretty cool. It was a pretty nostalgic trip. I was glad my kids could come. I don't know. They didn't enjoy it that much as much as I did. But I'm glad they were there. They can say they saw it in the theaters. And I'm sure that'll give them a lot of cred on the old playground just like it would have got me back in the day, I'm sure. But I definitely enjoyed it. But what say you guys out there? Are you planning on seeing the movie? Have you seen the movie? I'm sure most of you guys have. Uh, and what's your favorite part of the movie, of course. So leave it down in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow along on Patreon for early content, bonus content, giveaways, all that fun stuff. Sir Paul 64 is where you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle, or the Kyle underscore Peterson, of course, over there on Instagram, and then ProWrestlingTees.com, search Kyle Peterson. So I'm going to do like Jinx would do. I'm going to make like an amoeba and split.